Underwood. Thin Ice! <laughs> To smoke some weed and shut up. My God. Oh, that's not for sure. There it is. Boom! Yes! Okay. Uh, Atlanta Basketball Podcast episode 209, uh, March 26th, 2024. Tuesday, as uh, people from the Midwest would say, because they're idiots. Uh, <laughs> Tuesday. March 26th, uh, Illinois still alive in the uh, in the tournament, something that we – I feel like every year we either end up doing a Friday episode after a first-round loss or a Sunday episode after a second-round loss. So it's nice to do yeah. a, a Tuesday episode after, a, you know, winning and then trying to get ready for the, the next game. It's a little different for us. We're not used to that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Illinois on in the Sweet 16, uh, I, I guess – we probably don't sound as excited as we should because we had a live watch party afterwards or a live incident react afterwards. So um, it's big news, big stuff. Uh, it's exciting, except they play at 10 o'clock at night. But, you know. Yeah, that game's actually probably not going to start until 9.30 if I guess. Yeah, I'm going to have to crush some caffeine that day, Thursday, that is. So, But, yeah, coming off a win against Duquesne, because that's how you say it, obviously. 89-63. Uh, we'll go over some numbers. I got some quotes here, but I, I don't think there's anything really to complain about this game. I mean, Illinois showed up. They looked good from the get-go. Uh, Brad, you know, credited the defense and not letting them start on a 9-0 run like Moorhead State. And and it was, uh, it was a solid game all around. But uh, player of the game, I assumed you went with Terrence. I don't know. Um, but 33 minutes for him, 10 for 14, very efficient, two for five from three, perfect from the line, eight for eight, 30 points, four rebounds, four assists, two steals, five turnovers, which you don't love to see, especially going up against an Iowa State defense. But hopefully you can get that cleaned up. Uh, Terrence was once again one of the best players in the nation. So some would say the best, especially Illinois fans. Yeah, I mean, he's missed one shot. <laughs> from two in the tournament so far. Uh, yeah. I think he's 15 for 16 or something, uh, which that'll work. And if he's not missing free throws as well, uh, in the midst of Hawkins making those threes, he also made one. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't think any team in the country really is going to have an answer to completely stop him. I mean, I think there's things you could do to limit him, but yeah. Um, this was uh, – it's it's almost boring talking about this game. No offense to uh, Illini fans who really enjoyed the fact that the Sweet 16. I mean, we all do, but still. Yeah. Like, this was just simply a, that, that Duquesne couldn't hang. Game yeah, start to finish, ran him out of the gym. Um, maybe, you know, I don't know. You, some other guys like Ty, 25 minutes, one for two, two points, one rebound, one assist, a turnover for him. Um, Ty seems to not be – going like he was during the Big Ten tournament so far, but hopefully that'll change. Uh, we're going to need his defense along with his ball handling skills against Iowa State. So uh, Quincy, two, 20 minutes, 5 for 7, 0 for 1 from 3, 10 points, 6 rebounds. Quincy went to the rim, got some rebounds around the rim, some putbacks, made the bunnies, things you need to do to win. So good stuff from him. Coleman, 25 minutes, four for eight, three for seven from three, 11 points, seven rebounds, three assists, one steal. Uh, Coleman continues to, you know, do the little things, doing everything. Again, another guy that you're going to need to have step up. Uh, zero turnovers for him? Or did, did I just not write him down? Did he make all four of his shots in like the first eight minutes? Uh, he chucked that one three ugly. And then made it two. Yeah. Got and the then got made his own three. rebound. Yeah. So that's Sounds four right. shots. I think he made them all in the first eight or ten minutes. Yeah. Uh yeah, he had a zero turnovers. They had seven as a team, five for Shannon, one for Damask, one for Rogers. Yeah. Pretty good. A bunch, bunch of guys didn't turn it over. Yep. Um, Underwood said, quote, Coleman got us off to an elite start with those threes. A couple of elites from Brad. 
Uh, Coleman was in the post game presser. He said, quote, part of me wants to be really excited. Part of me wants to keep um, the jobs not finished mindset. I'm really happy with everything we have accomplished this year. But to say I'm really happy making a sweet 16, it's not what I want to say. I want to be happy winning a national championship. I'm aware with the history because it kind of gets thrown in our face a little bit. Good work, uh, Illinois and non-Illinois fans, I assume. <clears throat> Yeah, there you go. Uh, Coleman also said, quote, I feel really confident in this team because I feel like there's still something missing, what we haven't reached yet. I think there is a whole nother level of intensity that we can play both offensively and defensively. Uh, they're going to need that intensity against Iowa State. So hopefully Coleman and the boys can can ramp it up a little bit. Uh, Damask, another highly efficient game from him, 32 minutes, 9 for 16, 1 for 2 from 3. Three for four from the line, 22 points, three rebounds, seven assists by him, two steals, and a turnover. Um, Damas said, quote, I think we are hitting our stride and trending in the right direction. You always want to play your best basketball in March. Uh, yeah, so starters, the bench, Harmon, 18 minutes, 0 for 1, one rebound, two assists, one steal, one block. Uh, his offense is still kind of lacking, but I thought his defense was really good this game. Chester Frazier shared a couple uh, videos of him fighting over screens. Need to continue to do that. Luke Goody, 16 minutes, one for four, all threes, three points, one rebound. Dane Danger wasn't a Danger game, but he was in there. Uh, 13 minutes, again, four for four from the field. He hasn't missed a shot in the tournament. Eight points, missed all three free throws, five rebounds. Uh, didn't need Dane, so I don't mind resting him a little bit. Uh, DGL played eight minutes, took a three. Uh, I think he had two fouls. And then Hansberry, Moretti, Red, and Williams all got some playing time. Uh, Max Williams did hit a free throw, got a rebound. Uh, Hansberry had a bucket and two rebounds. So those guys got a little... March Madness time in them. I find it hilarious that uh, Max Williams, I think this says a lot about Illinois and DePaul, uh, that Max Williams was able to appear in 10 games this year and make three free throws out of four. And then he was at DePaul for three years and appeared in a combined nine, <laughs> which I think shows that Illinois is blowing teams out and DePaul is not. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Back. But he's yeah he's terrible. But either way, made, made three, <laughs> three out of four free throws this year. So there you go. He's not supposed yeah. to be good though. So <laughs> right. I mean, he's he's there to raise the GPA. I think, but it's okay. You need those guys. Uh, Brad in the post game said, "Quote: What a great start to the ball game. I have so much respect for Keith Dambrot. These two guys, Hawkins and Damask, who were up there with him, they made a difference on the defensive side to start the game." They're two terrific guards. I thought we did a good job on keeping them out of transition. When we got stops and rebound, we could be pretty special. Little lackadaisical start to the second half. Um, I don't know if I was even paying attention to the start of the second half, but uh, Day Day Grant was held to seven points on two of nine shooting, which is good to see. Uh, and then Clark had 14 points on five of 11 shooting. So pretty efficient from him, but. Uh, shut down Day Day, which was, I think, the big thing. Which, again, Terrence Shannon can lock down almost everybody. They talked a lot of Ty Rogers and how well he played defense against their guards. So, um, Underwood was asked about the monkey off his back making it to the Sweet 16 by Jeremy Warner. I, I guess that Warner must have asked this before because he started with, You told me to ask you this today. Like, I feel like he asked the day before which is whatever, but he said, quote, it's never been on my back. You guys made all of that. These guys don't know anything about that. I treat every team independently. I think for prog the program's sake, it is mind-blowing. He might have said numbing. Oh, wait, hold on. This program is elite, and to not be here for 19 years, that's more mind-numbing. We had tough draws and a couple injuries, and we got beat. That's the beauty of March Madness. On to Boston. Excuses. <laughs> He also said, quote, I'm to the point where I don't have to say a lot. These guys are grown men and they care. Sometimes they care too much. Who is he, Michael Scott? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Get off the podium, Brad. I well, mean, yeah, Brad, I Brad think. telling you everything you want to hear. 
the reasons they haven't been to a Sweet 16 in 19 years is, number one, Bill Self left. I know that Weber got to the Final Four, but still, or the mm-hmm. National Championship game, whatever, same thing. That's what they're going to do this year, maybe. We'll see. 5% chance. Maybe more. Um, I think that's that's about right. Number two is they were always like, like decent teams, but they weren't ever like Sweet 16 expectation Elite. teams. Yeah, they weren't. Well, there's <laughs> there were a couple of tiers away from elite. I mean, they were yeah. they were like solid, good, like Brandon Paul, DJ Richardson, yeah. like those are fine basketball teams, but they weren't like Brad's already had probably three teams that were better than anything Bruce Weber built himself. You know, yeah. um, like I would like, say the DJ were, Richardson Brandon Paul team would not be better than 21, 22 or this year. I got a great lead in for you there. They were like tier five teams, like our Twitter account. Yeah, that was weird. I didn't understand that tweet at all. He obviously, he obviously stood down after I responded. Yeah. Yeah. That Ethan uh, was scared of this Ethan. Yeah. Put it that way. It was big time, big time. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And then then the other reason is that John Gross could not coach at this level and recruit at this level. And that's proven by the fact that he's gone to Akron and once again, it's successful. He's a mid-major coach. Uh, he's a good coach at that level. He wasn't a good coach for this level. And Brad, I think the big thing for him before you before they made the decision to hire him is that he got a year at Oklahoma State and kind of proved that he could he could hang in terms of coaching there in the Big 12 and then comes to the Big 10. I don't think there was any proof of Brad really being a program builder until now. Um, like, you know, Stephen F. Austin, he was there for three years. His best player was a guy that was already there when he was there, which is – Thomas walk up and uh, you know, they had some success before he got there. They won 27 games the year before he got to Stephen F. Austin. Then Oklahoma state was just one year. So he's kind of proven himself now as somebody who can build a program. And uh, sweet 16 was the next logical step. And I'm not surprised this team is here at all. People bitching about the offense all season. And you just sit there and you say, look at the numbers. That's all you have to see. I don't care what you think philosophically about basketball from the offensive part of the game, the numbers really told you all you need to know about this team all year. And they are now going into the sweet 16 with the number one offensive efficiency in the country. Uh, I think it helps that Northwestern actually played pretty good defensively against UConn and UConn missed a ton of shots. That's why Illinois is uh, 0.4 ahead of UConn in efficiency. So got to feel good. Yeah. It feels uh, really good to be back in the Sweet 16. Uh, Sean, what's going on? Jeffrey, how you doing? H E A R. Jeffrey says to feed Dane. Uh, Wyatt, what's up? Jay, uh, we're going to talk about this, but he says, my keys to the game, limit turnovers, watch for traps and double teams, and get out into transition. Iowa State wants to slow the pace in the half court. Bootsilla, what's up? David, you're not that late. Thanks for showing up. We appreciate you guys. Um. Yeah, Illinois plays Iowa State. <laughs> yeah, uh, Illinois is the three seed, twenty eight and eight East Region. Iowa State's two seed, twenty nine and seven. This game's Thursday night. Approximate tip time is nine oh nine p.m. Central. I think it might be a little later than that. Who knows? Yeah. Though? yeah. Uh, it's, this game's on TBS. It's in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, the TD Garden. Uh, I want. I wish they would keep that floor that the Celtics play on, and then just put the March Madness logos on it. But that's fine. They won't. It's all right. <laughs> kind of sucks, but whatever. Um, should be a good. Should be a good ball game. I mean, definitely more intriguing than the other game before this because I just think that UConn. I think San Diego State can hang around with UConn, but I, I think that as long as UConn's playing the way that you know they play, I, I just think it's too much for for San Diego State. I mean, we kind of saw it in the national championship game last year. I would argue that. UConn is better this year than San Diego State is in terms of comparing to their team last year. Yeah. Because, you know, they lost, uh, what's his face, Kashad Johnson to Arizona and a couple other pieces and, and such. But, you know, both good teams, but I think this game will be better. Even though I think a lot of people look at this game like, eh, doesn't do it for me compared to the others. Because there are, you know, Duke Houston, I think is probably more intriguing than this game. Uh, Gonzaga, Purdue, Tennessee. Uh, Creighton, you know, stuff like that. But for us, it's a good game, right? I mean, you know, it should be, should be good. <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from a defensive standpoint, I'm Iowa State down a little bit more. Sure. 
this game's going to suck. Uh, <laughs> Iowa State, from a defensive standpoint, is different than anything Illinois has seen this season, I would say, in terms of not only the way they play, but also the efficiency numbers and how good they are defensively. Yeah. Um, but I almost think you can throw – I know everyone's going to say number one offense, number one defense. I would just throw that out the window and just play ball, you know? I don't think that that's going to – I don't think one team is going to dominate the other just because they're number one on one side of the ball. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, um, their guard play uh, defensively is really good. Um, Illinois guard play guard play. I don't know. Brad says that he starts five power forwards now, so um, is is really good offensively. So I think it's going to be a fun matchup. Our guys tend to turn over the ball under pressure, which scares me a little bit, but. Um, I watched a little video on their three main defenders. Uh, as a team, Iowa State averages around 10 steals a game. Um, their main guard defenders are Lipsy, Gilbert, and Curtis Jones, who comes off the bench. They're averaging a combined six turnover or six steals a game. Um, Lipsy, he's very active with his hands. Um, he can poke balls away. He has a really high IQ not to reach in when he does that uh he can disrupt ball handlers in transition and stop them at the rim uh he likes to get his hands on the balls as they say you know um, i don't know if i would just say that illinois tends to turn the ball over under pressure i think that's a bit like like damask and shannon both are not damask uh shannon and a couple others on this team have pretty good turnover rates in terms of not turning it over and uh, I think Damask is the one you're concerned with, but I think you're also – it's a certain type of defender that concerns people yeah. with Damask, and I think Iowa State has one. As, yeah. But uh, from a turno- – from a from a Brad Underwood, Illinois team standpoint, yeah, this is the best team in terms of taking care of the ball, I think. Yeah, I, I'm just talking about like Terrence has, has the tendency for little guards to poke the ball away. Coleman has that tendency. Damask has a tendency to – make bad passes out of traps, which is what Iowa state does a lot. So I, I'm, I'm talking about specific moments, not that they just, you know, turn the ball over all the time. So treat us um, like Purdue uh, last year. Gilbert uh, grades out as one of the best ISO defenders in the NCAA. Uh, I assume that he's going to be on Shannon. Most of the game he's long. Uh, he's athletic. So, That'll be an interesting matchup. And then Jones, um, even though he comes off the bench, he's averaging 27 minutes per game and one and a half steals a game. Um, they all, all three of them have elite reach around ability along with the others. They're well disciplined. Um, they're assignment sound and they get their ball. They get their hands up every time they trap. So even though Illinois might be tall on paper compared to them, I mean, Lipsy and, and the other guys, it, they make themselves long on the court and they're really good at reading eyes. They're really good at reading passing and, you know, jumping passing lanes. So yeah. Anyways, that's what I got for them. Um, they like the trap. They like to force you baseline. Damask booty ball is going to get forced baseline a lot. He's got to be able to get it out of there. You're going to have to be able to whip it around, hit open threes, uh, Dan, or Jeffrey says he thinks it's a Dane game because they won't give us any open threes. I think that they might be okay with Illinois shooting threes. Um, they don't want to get beat up with booty ball and Dane danger. So, yeah, they but, guard. They've yeah, guarded yeah. threes. They've guarded threes and twos well all season. Uh, Iowa State or not Iowa State? Iowa State against Washington State. Uh, Washington State was five for twenty three from deep and then sixty one percent from two. So they did beat him a little bit. In, uh, uh, from two, um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you look at the personnel for Iowa State, you have Lipsy at the one, he's a 6'1, 200 pound guard, sophomore, shoots at 39% from three, had 15 points, five rebounds, four assists in their Washington State win. Uh, Keyshawn Gilbert, 6'4, 200 junior, transfer from UNLV, uh, three for 13 from two and three for 14 from the field against Washington state. So they're going to need him obviously defensively. I uh, had 20 points in the big 12 tournament against Baylor in the semifinals. Uh, then they also have uh, Milan. Mabasovic. Um, <laughs> he's a freshman yeah. wing six, eight, two twenty. 
shoots at 36% from deep, uh, 82% free throw shooter, had 10 points and a rebound with a block in the steal against Washington State. They also have Trey King, 6'7", 230, senior transfer from Buffalo. Uh, kind of like a glue guy, it seems. You know, he can put up some numbers at several double-figure scoring games in the Big 12 this year. And then Robert Jones, 6'10", 255, senior uh, transfer from Denver a couple of years ago. This is his third year at Iowa State, so he's a, he's an awesome burger guy. Uh, not going to kill you offensively usually. I mean, his, his best game recently, his best game all season was – he had 18 points against Iowa. He also had 18 points against uh, Kansas State in their first Big 12 tournament game. Three offensive rebounds. Not much of a rebounder for being 6'10". Uh, it's something that I noticed. And then, like you mentioned, Curtis Jones off the bench. Hassan Ward off the bench. He had seven points in the game against Washington State. Doesn't shoot threes at all, but shoots at 63% from two. Shot at 69% from two last year. Uh, VCU transfer. Played huge minutes for them. Uh, they made the tournament in 2021. He was on that team. Uh, he'll probably play 10 to 15 minutes. And then they also have Demarion Watson, 6'7", 220 sophomore. Uh, played for them last year. Shoots 100% from three, two for two. <laughs> uh, and Very then, uh, yeah. So they got about eight guys. They run about eight deep. Their most frequent lineup is Gilbert Lipsy. Uh, okay, it's got to be Mom Solovic. Mom Solovic. That King right. and Jones, <clears throat> yeah. and then they also have uh, Lipsy and then Curtis Jones with uh, Gilbert and Watson and Ward, 36% used over the last five games. Um, so they're going to run, you know, they're going to run lineups with 6'4", 6'1", 6'4", 6'7", 6'10", or 6'4", 6'1", 6'8", 6'7", 6'10". So there's, there's length there. I mean, Illinois overall roster-wise yeah. have the advantage in height. They're eighth in the country, and Iowa State's 100th, so – I uh, experience also Illinois. They're 124th in experience as Iowa State. Illinois is uh, 11th. So it'd be interesting. I mean, th- there's a lot of – obviously, I'm always worried about Illinois, you know, breaking down and sucking in a big game like this <laughs> when they're supposed to not do that. Yeah. But for some reason, I'm not with this team, but I'll probably end up being wrong. They'll probably lose and we'll mm. want to die and the whole thing. But, uh, you know, from a from a personnel standpoint – these teams are different, but they're also both very good at what they do. So, yeah. and, and I also think Illinois is a hard team to plan for, even if you have like three days or four days, you know, because I think true. it almost, it's almost thrown out the window with the way that Illinois can easily space the floor. And that's why Iowa state double at your own risk. If Illinois is moving the ball well, like right. if Damask is not turning it over, out of those doubles, which he hasn't been recently. Right. He, he's very good against it, against Moorhead. Um, that's where things could get interesting. And I, I really wonder how they're going to approach Shannon in terms of the fact that he could just get to the rim at will against anybody, and he's done it all year. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jeffrey says expect to see at least a mid-court press. They do. They they trap up top two. Um, if they, if they bring that out against Shannon or somebody, I mean, Damask, the guys might have a hard time dribbling between them, but if they can pass out of that and get the ball moving again, get them spread out, get them running. None of this shot fake, let them reset their defense stuff. Um, Illinois got a good chance. They're, they got to rebound. They can't allow offensive rebounds and they got to get out and transition. So Players to watch. You ready for that? Already? Yep. Yep. All right. I'm going with Coleman Hawkins. Um, I think Coleman needs to, you know, take care of the ball. He can't make, you know, some some silly passes. Uh, he has a tendency going to the lane to get swiped by the smaller players. And Iowa State is really well trained on doing that against guys. Um, he needs to play hard and he needs to keep his head in the game. Uh, it, I don't know how this game will be officiated. But if it's officiated, you know, loosely, I guess, if if the whistles are swallowed, um, Coleman might get frustrated a little bit. If it's whistled tight, I think Illinois has a good chance of getting these guys in foul trouble. So it, that kind of work, you know, it kind of depends on who we get and how they want to call this game. I think they're going to let it free flow for a while, though. Um, I also think he's going to need to knock down some threes. Uh, that's going to help spread out Iowa State's defense. Uh, he's got to be, he's got to be really good uh, going to the lane. Their guys are really good at stopping guys at the rim. 
Uh, they, they're not huge guys down there, but they're athletic and they can jump and they can stop people. So that kind of worries me for Iowa state. I'm going with Keyshawn Gilbert. I talked about his defense, um, you know, top ISO defender in the nation. One of them, he's also averaging three point 13.7 points per game, which is leading Iowa state. Um, I assume he's going to guard Terrence Shannon. I I'm guessing Shannon is probably going to guard him. I don't know. Um, but he shoots at 34.3% from three and he averages 4.3 assists per game. Um, but they do turn the ball over a little bit. Uh, Gilbert turns it over almost three times a game and Lipsy turns it over twice a game. So Illinois, not a turnover team, but if you can take advantage of, you know, them turning the ball over Illinois, not turning it over that plays in Illinois favor. Seems like Iowa State really just has two handlers on offense. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how Illinois' defense Lipsy's, that. Lipsy's a really good point guard, which I know yeah. you're going to talk about him. So, Yeah, uh, for Illinois, I'm going with the mask. It's just all about passing out when when you need to and, and being aware of how Iowa State's going to defend you. Uh, and then keep making threes. He's up to 30% of the season. He's made – he's been pretty efficient from three in the last, like, two weeks. I think, which is a good thing. Uh, he's one for two against Duquesne, two for four against Moorhead, one for one against Wisconsin, the Big Ten Championship, two for five against Nebraska in the semis. Uh, so Damask going need, to gonna need a big game from him. And I'm going uh, with Lipsy for Iowa State, sophomore, young, but he's a creator. I mean, he's got 27 assists in the last five games. That's over five. And he shoots at 39% from three. So uh, this is the one guy I talked about whenever I brought up Iowa State early in the season. Um, I don't know when that was, maybe January or something. But, yeah, uh, yeah it'll be interesting to see how Illinois defends him. Have to think you're probably going to see Ty Rogers on him early and then maybe Harmon a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, would, and DGL maybe with, with tennis balls or whatever. <laughs> um, so Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Predictions. Uh, Jeffrey says, Bardo says we're as speedy as they are. I don't doubt that. Um, Wade, I think a good offense beats a good defense, all things being equal. And we have the second, we have the two best players on the court. I'm not worried. I like that. Nic Nicola, hi from Serbia. Thanks for stopping by. Um, sorry, did I miss one? Are we nervous for ISU hitting mid ranges? Seems that they take a lot more than a lot of teams we've played. I, I mean, that's what Brad wants to force teams into, right, is mid-range, tough shots. You got to rebound. This, this is a game where you got to rebound, and you got to make sure that you play the pace that, you know, Illinois wants them to play. Uh, Jeffrey has 83-69, Illinois. Jay has 81-74. I got a close one. <laughs> Illinois will be able to rebound in this game on the offensive glass. Yeah. Um, Spoiler alert, if you watched the uh, Sweet 16 episode last night, I didn't change mine. Did you change yours? Did he freeze, guys? Oh, he's gone again. Uh-oh. Ethan needs better internet, guys. He gone. Anyways, I'm going uh, Illinois 77, Iowa State 76. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be a battle. I think Terrence Shannon has the ball in his hands. Down the stretch. This happens like once an episode. <laughs> once an episode. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 hold on. Wait. Sucks. Uh, Illinois wins this one. Terrence Shannon buzzer beater. Okay. You can relax. Um, I was doing it because you left. My internet doesn't even shut off. It's just StreamYard <laughs> being yeah, trash. It did look like you were just sitting there thinking. <laughs> I was thinking, and now I'm, I got my prediction. What did I say? 70, 76, 72, yeah, Illinois by four. I don't know. Same as you had just, yesterday. Just yeah, just win the game. Just win the game. You know, just win the game. Jeffrey thinks it's your video card. Probably is. <laughs> I probably need to replace it, but whatever. Yeah, I, I got so many tabs open right now, so that's kind of a problem. That's true. But uh, win win the game. Win the know? game. That would be cool. Or at least they, have a chance won. to win the game. That's, that's I don't think there's any shame in losing this game, but you, no, you I'm just saying win. have a chance. They haven't lost by double digits all year. Let's not make it in the sweet 16. Okay. 
The closest they were was uh, they lost by nine to Maryland and eight to Michigan State. So, uh, by the way, I don't know if you guys read the fine print in our bracket thing. You guys had to pick Illinois to win it all to have a chance. I don't know what you guys are doing. I'm dominating that thing. <laughs> dominating. I'm like in eighth place or whatever. <laughs> Domination. Uh, Nicholas says he's very confused. I, I feel like that's. I feel like that's got to be a bot or something. Who cares? Well, he's gonna. He's gonna hack us. I mean, you know. <laughs> how's he gonna hack us? That work? Maybe that's why you froze. Nicholas, calm down. All right. Um, you guys want to talk about the Sweet Sixteen? Anything? Uh, you guys ask questions. Ethan will give you a breakdown of, you know, what he thinks is gonna happen. I guess and I'll sit here and, and, and you'll give a breakdown of what you think is going to happen. Yeah. Do I need to pull that up? Are we going to give our predictions for every game on this? I did want to address this tweet. Oh um, yeah. I tried to lead into it with the tier five thing, but you just ignored me. I wanted to wait. Okay. Uh, so basically the Barstool line, I account tweeted this out, which I mean, guys, uh, this is a classic example of why care about something, you know? Why do you have to fucking care? Like, how stupid. Whoever runs this account is such an idiot, and I've been doing nothing but calling this moron out for months. It, like, it, what, why, do, why should we be the ones to judge who Nebraska wants to classify as a legend of the program? Yeah. I didn't, so I watched that clip. I didn't even hear him say that he was a legend. So I don't even know what he's talking about, but yeah, he's a legend for Nebraska for sure. And how many Japanese kids come over here and, and play, right? That's pretty cool. So I just tweeted that the account blows and they need to figure it out. And the takes are trash and it's a bad look for us. And, uh, a lot of people took this as a barstool, like an anti-barstool thing on my end, which is not. <laughs> okay. uh, but, I mean. Ethan's, I told Ethan, his rants do number on, do, do. Jesus. His rants do numbers on Twitter, and that's also why everybody shows up here, so. Yeah. And. So, uh, rant more. This is our most viewed tweet ever for sure. So the shout out, you know, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just, it's, this is my, this is my point. All college barstool accounts blow. That was my point, basically. Yeah. And the Illini one really sucks. Like it's just, I don't even follow it anymore. So, uh, yeah, like they, 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 they care way too much about things that don't affect the team right now. And it's annoying. Yeah. Uh, Happy Hermit says, with the IS, with ISU keen in on TSJ and Damask, this is a good time for Goody to go off from three. I think Goody can get some open looks in this game, for sure. Uh, Ethan, you're a Larry Bird fan. Doesn't 22 shoot like him? Yeah, I think almost every foreign wing player shoots <laughs> like Larry Bird. Like, uh, what's his face that's going to be a top five pick? who's playing, I don't know if he's playing the G League thing that still exists or if he's playing in the overseas. I can't remember his name, but he kind of shoots like Bird, too. Yeah. Uh, Jay says, from the teams Illinois has played this year, the closest team to them is Tennessee. That sounds right. Tennessee or Marquette, yeah. Yeah. Ken Palm has, Ken Palm has Tennessee 8th, Illinois 10th, Marquette 13th. You need to play Dane more against Tennessee. Look at that up here. Yeah, Dane only put in four minutes. Had two offensive boards. Turnover. Yeah. Didn't trust him against Adu. Is that his name? Adu? Mm-hmm. Didn't trust him. All right. Pretty inefficient uh, game from Shannon in that game, too, so that didn't help. <laughs> And Coleman, well, actually Coleman was at four for thirteen in the field is not great, but made three threes. So also Damask two for eleven. It's pretty easy to see why they lost that game, and it's kind of <laughs> crazy that they're even close. Yeah, uh, they were leading a half. Yeah, they're thirty six thirty four at half right there. Boom. 
And then Ty Rogers hook and hold, and then see you later. <laughs> Ended it. Yeah. So your my elite eight is UConn, Illinois, uh, North Carolina, Arizona, Duke, Marquette, and then what I have Purdue and. Tennessee. Tennessee. I switched to Tennessee, right? You yeah. did switch to Tennessee, yeah. Yep. And I got so that would be one three one three one two four two one two. <laughs> which is good. I got Yukon, Illinois, Alabama, Arizona, uh Duke, Marquette, Marquette Gonzaga, Tennessee. God, what a big ten hater. Uh, I told you those were for personal reasons. The Bama and the Gonzaga pick are for personal reasons. So, it's not what that I hate a sad way Purdue to look at fans. That. Oh, you don't bet on games? Not really. Very uh, rarely. Duke over Houston. Interesting. Yep. I yeah, I think Houston. Uh, I don't know. It depends. I think that's going to be a big game in terms of how it's officiated. True. Because if Houston's able to get as physical as they want with Duke, then it could really be a problem for them. And like yeah. Filipowski's going to be in a wheelchair in the first five minutes. We did talk about it. I, I mean, I was impressed by the way Houston scored the ball in their last game. But it was against think... Texas A&M, who like barely even like most of those SEC teams don't even really play don't basketball. Play defense. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's a miracle that Texas A&M being like super, like just terrible from three, two and the free throw line all year and getting to the second round. That's an accomplishment in and of itself. They're 26 in the country in offensive efficiency, but they're 342nd from three and 311th from two. So basically they're just a top 30 offense because of not turning the ball over and getting a ton of offensive rebounds. Jeffrey still thinks Houston's overrated. We know Jeffrey, you've been talking about it all year. Uh, Lunker says Iowa State is going to pressure us and trap and double. We have to keep the turnovers low. I think I, I mean, I think everybody kind of knows what Illinois needs to do to win this game. It's just if they do it, so I, I hope that they come out shooting well. That, that's the only thing that worries me is going to a new place. You're a great offense. Your offense isn't humming out the gate. That worries me. Yep. So. Can we keep the streak of giving up less than 70 points? Two in a row. <laughs> Against good know. opponents. Uh, Lunker's bracket's at 99.7%? Or it's in the 99.7%. Wow, I'm glad that you picked all chalk, Lunker's. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Your bracket. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Your bracket on this thing here is at uh, fifty four point one. Sounds pretty good. Brutal. I'm uh, third place, second place in Edgewoods, though. Calm down, buddy. By the way, I have Purdue winning. <laughs> yeah, I think I did too. No, I think I have UConn over Purdue. Actually, I don't know. I can't remember. Shout Purdue. out to Jeffrey. None of my brackets are Jeffrey. Jeffrey's thirtieth out of thirty seven in their bracket thing. What the hell, <laughs> Jeffrey? <laughs> Oh man, that's not good. <laughs> I'm eighth right now, so and I, I messed up a couple of my picks. I I went a little too hard with Kentucky. I was dumb. Yeah, same. I I had uh Kentucky get into the final four. So I am done trusting Kentucky. Done. But yeah. Uh anything else, guys? Let me read this ad and you guys can add some questions. As always, we want to thank Alamo Steakhouse and Saloon at 700 East Broadway Avenue in Mattoon, Illinois. You can find them online at www.alamo-steakhouse.com. Uh, happy hour, weekdays, 4 to 6. You can get $7, small nachos, beer battered mushrooms, Wisconsin cheese curds, fried green beans. Or for $9, you can get 10 wings or bull bites or hen pecks or sliders. They have $2 wells and domestics. They have $3, you call it, an Alamo margaritas. And they have $5 wine and specialty martinis. 
if you guys would like to be a sponsor for all our episodes we'll do in the summer, uh, feel free to reach out to us at Illini Basketball Podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, leave a re- review. We are at 510, guys. So uh, if you hit that sub button, we'd appreciate it. Now you can watch all our playbacks with ads. I don't know if that's how it works, but I haven't done it yet. So, uh, all chalk? Question mark, Jeffrey. Let's not talk about it. I don't know what's going on in the chat. Iowa State scares me. We'll see CBS hate us. Illinois is the villain. Of course, we ain't CBS on CBS. That's not that's not how the <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I'm sure they were like, oh, we've been planning to have this region on CBS and this one on TBS the entire time. Uh, but Illinois is in it, so isn't, we got to make sure we definitely don't have them on there. I mean, isn't the rematch of last year's national championship on TBS? Yeah, that's what the that's so, where the East Region. Yeah, I don't think I don't think any are any of the are any of the Thursday games on TBS or CBS. Where did the chalk saying come from? Okay, the other ones. Okay, so the West Region is on CBS. The East Region's on TBS, and then. The South regions on like Purdue and Gonzaga and Creighton, Tennessee are on TBS. Like that doesn't have anything to do with who's playing. TV contracts. All chalk. Planned. Oh this is oh my gosh. I don't want to. It's not a slight to Illinois. Not everything is a slight at Illinois. <laughs> uh after President Barack Obama made his bracket last year, Salon said his addiction to Chuck was a fitting microcosm for his pre- Oh, wait, that's not it. What, what are we even looking for? Who cares? I don't know. I was just trying to help him out. We don't need we don't need help with it. Look it up yourself. Okay. I mean Wow. I was just I was just key. We're just sitting here just well, now asking you're for questions. You're getting political. You're getting, it was a joke. No, you're getting political. Oh, jeez. I what you know what I've noticed in the last few years is that th- it is this podcast like this are hard to do during the tournament. Yeah, sure, but that's just another thought for another day. Not everything's a slight at Illinois. I don't know what you want me to say. Like, yeah, they barely mentioned us. There's also sixty three other teams in the tournament. God. We've gotten enough attention, guys. We don't need to crave attention from everybody. This is like the Illinois fan mindset where it's just like, take it down a notch. Just enjoy the team and be ready to perform on a, on a big stage at midnight on Thursday. All right, Jeffrey, you want to know what it came from? It's it came from being a chalk eater, so you're too dumb to make a pick, so you just pick the top team. There you go. Yeah, idiot. <laughs> We're learning today on Illini Basketball Podcast. Do you think Illinois is being slighted by CBS because they don't mention them? No, I don't really care if they talk about us. I'd rather them not talk about us, honestly. It's nice to get a shout out here and there. The Big Ten Network's talking about us. All the time. That's right. Brad will go on with anybody but us. Purdue fans are always talking about us. Doesn't that make you feel good? Yep. Uh, Butil says, keep winning and we'll get all the attention you want. All right, that's enough. (laughs) All right, we'll uh, be back with a late night instant reaction. Yes, yeah. I, mean, I don't know what else. You know. We'll see you guys at midnight. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you at midnight Friday morning. <laughs> so, thanks everybody for coming by. Again, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Send them out, Ethan. We'll, yeah, we'll be back uh, Thursday night, Friday morning slash, slash in between those two things, but uh, see if they can uh, get it done. Uh, goodbye.